Hello and welcome to Dave Makes Stuff. A proper off-roader needs a proper off-road bumper. I stumbled across some curved tube at the metal yard. I thought it looked like a pretty good fit, but to be honest, it's bang on. Guess the front bumper's going to be curved then. We've got to start by removing the old crash bar. It kind of looks like a bumper, but it's not wide enough and it's got spiky corners as well. Now it's gone, I can wave the curved tube mystically in front of the car in an invocation. And then, perhaps more usefully, start welding it into the beginnings of a frame. And scarcely 30 seconds in, it already looks bumpery. Next up, because I'm going to be forming it all on the car, I want to make sure it doesn't move around while I'm doing it. So just for the moment, I'm going to tack it to the old bumper mounts. This approach is, of course, precision engineering at its finest. Next up, I'm going to chop out a length to go along the top of the grille opening. But clearly, before I can fit it, I need to make the uprights that go next to the headlights. So we'll have one kind of here-ish, some rough shaping to make it look like this-ish, and then some, well, marginally less rough shaping, with the aspiration to make it look like uh, this-ish. Anyway, eventually it fits, and you can see as it gets close up, the interface between the two is kind of like the wiggly pattern you get on a tennis ball. Time to tack it in place. I've wedged a block of wood between it and the headlamp, not because protecting the headlamp is important, but because I still want to be able to adjust the headlamp beam afterwards. Same again on the other side. Again, I've taken a bit of time to match the curvature of the two tubes, and now I'm going to use the bonnet as a reference to trim the tubes down to the right height. Two things to notice about the next shot. One, headlamp is protected. Two, because of the artsy lighting, slow motion to symbolise the throwing away of uh, steel. And we can close the bonnet, symbolically. Now I'm confident the tube's the right shape and in the right place, we can weld it in a bit more permanently. For mitering two tubes together, there are basically two approaches. Plan it carefully, or go banzai and hope. We picked one of them. And when that went alright, it was obviously a sign that we could forget all caution and forget to protect the headlamp again. That went alright too, which brought us to this. Unfortunately, despite a lot of detailed forethought and planning, it became obvious that the best location for the bumper mounting bolts was right where I'd tack welded the frame in. So I put another tack weld in and started chopping them out down to size. I was of course much more careful about the positioning of the second tack. The mount itself is just a nut welded thoroughly to the back of a washer, which in turn gets thoroughly welded to the old crash bar mount. Because it's a trapped nut and I can't get access to it, I don't want it to snap off, ever. So I'm welding it thoroughly on all six sides. Once it's cooled down I can plug it into the tube and then I'm going to weld it in, not completely, I'll come back and do that when the bumper's not in the way, but plenty enough that it's not going to move around at all. With that mount done, we can get on with the final pair of tubes. Again, these are to be cut and fish-mouthed and then partially welded in for now. Back to the mounts again. This time I'm making the half that's part of the bumper. And I'm using an off-cut of scaffolding bar and some laser-cut flat washers I had left over from another project. For robustness, I'm welding around the full circumference of the tube. The washers have a small pilot hole in the middle, which would ordinarily be a good thing. The downside, of course, is that if you weld it all together with dodgy alignment, <coughs> the finished hole will have dodgy alignment, whatever you do. For this purpose, it doesn't really matter. Incidentally, I'm using the lathe here because it's stiffer and more powerful than my pillar drill. Anyway, dodgy alignment or no, the next step is to bolt the two halves of the mount together, and then thus positioned to weld it all in. And there we go, truly a thing of beauty. OK, the bumper as it stands isn't going to work unless we wrap it around the sides of the car, so the front wings are getting another trim. I want the wing just clear of the bumper so I can fold the cut edge under later without leaving a massive gap. Straight tube seems right for the sides, uh, because I've used all the curved tube. Seems to fit. Nothing hugely involved here. Mitre, quick weld to secure it, and we can move on. Ah, yes. Remember those tack welds I had to move earlier? Well, now the main mounts are in, we can cut those tacks free. Uh, given their carefully chosen location, it's impossible to get the grinder in, so I'm cutting it loose with a hacksaw blade. This is called doing it right, kids. Having effortlessly removed those tacks, we can now effortlessly remove the bumper, because it's time to consolidate all the welding. And when I say all the welding, I was starting to realise at this point that maybe the job was a little bit bigger than I'd um, anticipated. My upload deadline was starting to loom. It became apparent that, for my neighbour's sanity's sake, 
I probably needed to limit my angle grinding time a bit, and this was going to have to be another two-parter. Having reached that conclusion, here I am with the angle grinder. I want the mounting tubes to be a bit more strongly tied into the main bumper structure. So what I'm going to do is fill in around them with sheet steel, and in order to do that I need to trim the tubes back so that they're more or less flush with where the flat sheet will sit. It's a bit of an iterative process. Grind some, measure some, grind some more, and more, and more, and... Oh wait, now we're grinding the sheet steel instead. So this infill panel then needs a hole for the mount to pass through, which should be nice and easy, but my hole saw is as sharp as a spoon. So that didn't go terribly well, and an angle grinder might have been involved at some stage. Well, I say might. Now, having demonstrated experimentally that it's not a great idea to go wibble with the welder and just weld everything in one go, I'm starting with the area around the mount and then working fairly cautiously around the perimeter. I did take to water cooling everything at one stage. This was probably not a great idea as it meant I had an electric welder, wet workpiece, wet floor, and I was in the garage so sparks and flammable stuff everywhere. It was a challenge to work out which factors combined. Did the water cancel out the flammability and make things safer, or create an electrical hazard and make things worse? This is not called doing it right, kids. Moving swiftly on. I needed some mesh to protect the grill apertures, so I went back to the metal yard and found this. It's got some nice stiff flat bar for the uprights and some flexible bar for the horizontals, which is perfect. To ensure a good fit, I've made a little template that fits around the horizontal bars which lets me trim the vertical bars so they all match. At this point, I can probably demonstrate why this bumper build is going to be spread across two videos. There are 19 vertical bars for the lower grille and probably 21 for the upper. Each of them needs both ends trimming to something approximating the right profile, so that's 80 fairly tight radius bends to create with an angle grinder. Coincidentally, soundproof the garage door is feeling like a good idea about now. Either that or barricade the garage door which might not be too hard given the amount of stuff already in the way in there. I'm not sure I really want to ask the neighbours, lovely as they all are, to tolerate the screech of the grinder at all hours. You can probably see in the background that this wasn't the first, a few have been done already, and eventually we got to this point. Definitely suits this TT's off-road pretensions better than the stock bumper. I'm going to weld the grill into position via the tips of the verticals, the better to eliminate their sharp points. Looking like it wants to eat you is one thing. Giving it the teeth to do it is perhaps quite another. I hadn't noticed before, but I think it has a happy face here. Right, time to complete the sides. I'm going to start by trimming the top tube back so that it finishes where the wheel arch starts, and then I'm going to cut the bumper's lower tube short and triangulate it to the free end of the top tube. Once again, rather than measure and calculate and get everything spot on before cutting, it's sometimes easier just to mark it up and trim it until it works. In this position I can leave some extra length on, so the scope to trim the front end until it fits well enough. Once it's welded in I can trim the back end too and then weld the two tubes together. Structurally there's no real merit in joining two tubes like this, but there doesn't need to be. The real strength will come when we fill in between the two with sheet metal, which is going to look something like this. This piece is going to start on the front of the bumper and wrap round to the side, so I'm going to put in several folds close together to create a single bend with a larger radius. The folder is really useful for this, but otherwise I'd probably form it over a piece of scaffolding bar with a hammer or a mallet. The folder's just convenient. And here we go, nearly there. All that remains is uh, quite a lot of welding. Again, it's important not to let things get too hot and expand and move around, and then when they come back together you find that what was nearly a bumper shape is sort of pretzel shaped. So this was where I started cooling it down with water so I could get it done in time. Which brings us to, drum roll please, one front bumper in all of its part one not quite finished yet glory. There's still some more to add. Mainly, of course, the central grille needs filling in, but we'll also have a bit more triangulation on the corners and some caps on the ends, and I think a coat of paint so it actually looks finished. But for this episode, that's us done. If you've enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe and we will immeasurably improve your life, somehow.